At the Go Diving Show this year, I had the luck to be able to catch up with Ross Kemp before one of his presentations on the main stage. The second season of Ross Kemp's Shipwreck Treasure Hunter has finished filming and is due to be released sometime this year, where Kemp learns the history and explores several shipwrecks. The first season was a four-part documentary focusing on British shipwrecks, so let's see how this BAFTA award-winning presenter fares to my interview questions. Right, Russ, so what's the main subject of your talk today at the Go Diving Show on the main oh, stage? It's about the TV program that we make, the documentaries that we make for Sky History. So uh, Shipwreck Treasure Hunter was the first series. It's now Deep Sea cool. Shipwreck Treasure Hunter because we're going a little bit deeper and we're traveling a little bit further. <laughs> so in the first series, we, um, we went up to Scapa, I will yep. say rather than Scarpa, Scapa Flow. Uh, which holds um, a kind of family connection because it's the last place that the hood sailed from before it was blown up by the Bismarck and two of my relatives were on that. Um, so that was, and it was also, you know, I went from being basically an open water diver to an advanced, to an advanced rescue to an HSE qualified diver in a matter of months. Uh, which was a big learning curve that and in between life. in between lockdown because yeah. I, I mean I got my paddy open water in the 90s and then I really didn't dive much after the 2000s mm -hmm. um, other things happened in my life mainly making documentaries around the world um, I dived once actually off HMS Northumberland in the uh, off the coast of Oman uh -huh. which is quite amazing um, but apart from that didn't really do much diving and then um, I was making a documentary about um, dangerous wild animals in people's back gardens. Believe it or not, there are people that keep quite large exotic cats in their back gardens in the UK. Um, and I was talking to the producer uh, about diving. And I said, once I was in the Maldives and I went into a wreck called the Victory. And you could you know, go in, I think it's about 30 metres. You could go in and you could take your reg out and hang off the ceiling because there was a, uh, an air pocket. Every time I took the regs out, it cool. let more out, air out. And, he then went off and then sold Ross Kemp Shipwreck Treasure Hunters to, um, to, to Sky History. Yeah? And um, at that point, I was only an open water diver. And without a commercial ticket, you can't film underwater. <laughs> so I then went on a very steep learning curve. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know that myself. I'm doing mine in April, oh, yeah. HSE. Uh, so after all the amazing documentaries that you've done around the world, yeah, what specifically drew you to scuba diving? Was it just that you, um, yeah, you, you, you you mentioned that you were... Um... But what drew me to it was the fact that it was a job. Uh, sure. But also, <laughs> I think what happened was that, you know, I worked with Mark Powell um, to begin with, who's a legend in terms of teaching of Scuba Diving International. You know, he was a great teacher. And I've always had an affinity with the water, as I say, in the, in the, in the, um, with the sea. I've always loved the ocean, loved the water. Um, and didn't take me long to kind of fall back in love with it. Um, and I'm still in love with it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I don't know what will happen next, whether we'll get a third series, but I do believe the second series has moved it on considerably. Cool. Um, not only in terms of, you know, I think it's great to promote British diving and I will carry on promoting British mm -hmm. diving, but you know, there's often days when you go down there and you can't see much. Whereas you need to the Red Sea and it's a, it's a yeah. yeah um, but mixture of both is quite good. Good. Um, so I've watched a few of them. And what advice would you give to new divers when it comes to water current? Because I saw on one of your dives, you had to get it just well, about Well, that was because I was, I was with Emily uh, Turton um, up in Scarpa and we were in um, a, a block ship uh, called Tabarka. And that was one of my first dives, actually, um, filming. So all of a sudden, the reason that the HSC is so complicated, it's so you can work. And no, I'm not welding, you know, two bits of cable together. I don't, don't think I could do that. But you have, you know, you've got to have your presenter head stroke documentarian head on, but you've also got to have your diving head on. And when the current changed, and as she said, when the fish starts swimming backwards, <laughs> um, you know, it, can have an effect if you're in slack water and all of a sudden you go into quite a strong tide mm -hmm. it has an effect on you and i actually flipped up and if you know if you're in a dry suit that means all the air goes up to your feet and you're dangling down there now and it's very difficult to right yourself particularly if you've got a jagged roof above you yeah don't want to be really touching that don't want to be touching <laughs> that um but it, you know i think the jeopardy was overly dramatized slightly by the way the music and everything went 
but it was potentially hazardous. Um, but you know, if your training's good enough and you're with the right other, the other divers, your buddies, as it were, um, you're generally going to be all right, I think. Um, but we know that diving isn't a safe sport. Mm. It has an element of jeopardy to it, and that's what's part of the attraction. Yeah. yeah. How does your family feel about you diving some of the most dangerous shipwrecks around the world? I don't know they're dangerous, most dangerous. <laughs> um, I think my family, my family are, are cool with it because I've been to war zones, I've been to hostile environments for the last 20 odd years. Um, that's why I carry a piece of wood around my neck so I can touch it, touch wood. Uh -huh. Everything's all right. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. That's my motto. As well. um, so now I want to know if you have any particular scuba diving rituals. For example, with me, when I first sort of get in, I don't really know why I do it, but I'm just going to do a big stretch. I don't know I why. I touch wood before I go in the water. Yeah. yeah. And even if I've got, so that's what I've got. If you look, my fingers have got, it's not, obviously it helps with dexterity. Um, I'm reminded, I remember when my gloves first got caught, cut because I said I, it's also because I have to touch wood before I jump yeah. jump in because I'm so superstitious uh, uh, my dive master Neil Brock who is a legend in diving circles runs Bristol Channel Divers um, he was cutting when he said he's got his, he's got his uh, Gerber out and he's cutting away and he says always cut towards your chum always cut away from your thumb you can always get another chum you will never get another thumb. <laughs> Which is not a bad idea. That's not good. Cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. Yeah. Uh, what would you recommend to other divers to improve their experience with shipwrecks? Is there anything in particular that? I think you plan your dive properly. Good. You know, you get and you go with local knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Ian Taylor, for instance, skin deeper. You know, you can't get much better. Um, mm -hmm. But there are. You go with with the local knowledge. Uh, divers down, for instance, absolutely superb. Um, uh, you, you, you go with the people that know the tides, know the slacks. Um, it's, anyone can get in, it's mm. making sure you get back out again. Yeah. One thing I like is like the, the history of the shipwreck as True, well. True, totally. It makes a huge difference yeah. because you can... What is the point of just driving on a piece of metal unless you understand why it's down there or a piece, you know, a load of matchsticks? Mm. You know, you've got to know why it's there, what happened to it, understand what happened to the people on board. Mm -hmm. I think that's always the most, for me, it's, if I make, I make documentaries generally about human beings and that's why there is an actual segue to Rex because generally human beings are on those yeah, ships. Yeah, that's a human that, story. It's a human story. Mm. Human, human beings built that ship. Mm -hmm. Where was it built? What was it carrying? Why did it sink? Yep. And that's ultimately what Shipwreck Treasure Hunters is about. Yep. You know, if we find something, and it, you know, for me, it doesn't matter whether it's a small piece of the Mary Rose or a silver coin, mm. it's all treasure. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so, with the Aqualung being created in 1943, yes, of course, 80 years ago now, if you could go back in time 80 years or forward in time 80 years to either be one of the original pioneers or to see the new exciting Oh, the new dive exciting, come on. Which direction now would I'm you go? Now go forward, I, I really? think. Yeah, well, you'd rather go back and yeah. do the old stuff. Yeah. The way they did things, and everything's pristine back then. So, I mean, yeah, granted. No, I'd, I'd, like to, well, I'd like to do both, but I think I would, I mean, imagine how what the advances are going to be, how much deeper you're going to be able to go. Yep. Uh, you know, how much safer, hopefully, it will be. Not that it's not safe now, but, you know, at, at the rapid rate that technology is traveling, mm. you know, there is no, you know, wrecks that are completely unattainable now, unless you, you know, you try mixing, Little and yeah, and and stuff. you know, or, or 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 you're, you know, you're in in a in a in a, in a uh, submarine. I would imagine that that will be open to you know all divers one day, one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, where can people follow your work and see the amazing things that you can do? Sky History, you know, go to catch up. Um, uh, go to your Skybox, or you can watch it on Virgin. This one's going out on Virgin as well. Um, alternative, you can get to YouTube, I guess, but. I don't think I'm making any money out of that one. I don't think I'm making money, money out of this one. No, I am. I'm getting paid very well, thank you. Um, but it's not about the money, mainly with this gig. This gig is, is, you know, to get paid to go to the Red Sea and dive on the Thistlegorm is double... It's rough. Double bubble. Because <laughs> aren't you doing one um, north of Sheppey, the one with all the explosives on it? 
That has Did been muted, that? but no, that's probably, you wouldn't get the rights to go around that, would you? I was going to say, because I've, I've seen headlines, oh, Ross Kemp is doing this, and I live like in the splash zone if it went off. I was like, really? Really? How's he going? No. <laughs> no, definitely not. I don't think anyone should go anywhere near that unless no. they're, um, you know, a military uh, naval diving engineer or a, yeah. um, uh, what the boys called it? Yeah, like EOD. Yeah. Yeah. That's their area.